Hey guys, it's Carrie here and I'm back with something different, a cozy studio vlog. Today I'll be making stickers, some other merchandises, and one stationary item. And I did all that last week and I'm preparing for a convention in South Carolina. And uh, this was my first time getting a cricket. And oh man, it was much nicer than my silhouette. I had so much trouble with the registration mark. I hear the sound, guys. The sound, so relaxing. For some people, that sound is jarring, but it just makes me happy that my machine is working. And look, it cut out all the sticker, even on a holographic sticker paper. So I need to go back and troubleshoot my other sticker cutting machine, but I'm so happy these came out good. Oh man, my last two conventions, I had a lot of trouble with stickers and I had to cut them by hand and it was so painful. So, oh, this was such a treat. I got it used on Facebook Marketplace for about a hundred bucks and the color was mint green and now I'm trying it on matte sticker paper and ah, oh, I love this thing and again it it's just it, it wastes some sticker paper but that's some of the downsides with making stickers with a cutting machine instead of doing it yourself. It's so relaxing taking it off and uh, the reason I fold the mat is because I don't want the stickers to bend so yeah the first time I did this I was trying to it was really hard to pick out my stickers and they came out a little bit wobbly and I just had a lot of fun doing this so I'm gonna show you guys how they look like when I stick them on I made a couple of my logo and so I decided on this one and I just used this tool to help me easily unpeel the stickers but oh they're such nice quality i had to play around with the settings a couple of times to get it exactly how i want at least color wise but oh i love it guys you guys see the close-up you guys see the reflection oh best investment that i've done and now i'm gonna put one, another one on my heat press i use this machine a lot to make other merch as you guys will see here, Anya! I drew Anya already and I needed to draw a different facial expression. I wanted to make a face mask out of it. And yeah, I had to go back and uh, do her smug look. And I was struggling with that a little bit. I didn't know if I, it should be like how creepy it should be. And speaking of Spy X Family, the new season just dropped recently and I watched the first episode already and it's amazing i need to draw anya and her dog don't worry i won't go into spoiler territory with this one um, i just really enjoy the show it's pretty wholesome it's not super plot heavy there's just a lot of fun moments i love anya a lot and uh, this part of the video is just a relaxing speed paint a little bit um i do have more studio vlogs of when um I got all this equipment because um, I know this is a sudden jump for my channel. I mostly make vlogs about being an animation student. Don't worry, I'll make a, another follow-up video on that. I have some more vlogs I haven't edited, but this is what I did last week. That's why I didn't post a video last week. And um, I'm hoping some of this is interesting for you guys seeing how what I do as a full-time artist. For this vlog, I didn't show much of my day, mostly the work since uh, it was super busy. I didn't have time to set up my camera to show what I was eating or my whole room. My hair wasn't really done, so I didn't want to show my face for this video and uh, I was just in like cozy wear for the whole week. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this, especially different facial expression. I really struggle a lot with her smug smile and i'm using clip paint studio to draw this on my vike uh tablet i'll leave the link to everything i use down below i already did a review of this tablet if you haven't seen it before on my channel and i like it because it's a giant big screen and it makes it so much easier to work 
so yeah so nothing super aesthetic it's just me working and youtube has been my primary income with sponsorships and i've been trying to diversify my income a lot more as an artist and try my hand on making products and i went through so many failures man um the good thing is i recorded all of them so that way you guys can see all the initial investment that i did so many things that i work out even in this video itself you guys will see on how uh, with me trying to make some new products um how i wasted a lot of materials trying to do it so it's a lot of trial and error um but in the long run i believe that'll be worth it uh, when i'm making things myself i get to control a lot of the profit margin i didn't want to make designs of things that i didn't think would sell so that's why i'm trying my hands at the convention scene first before i fully delve into my online store uh, i do plan to have it open up pretty soon soon um sometimes this month so i'll keep you guys posted you guys can check out shop.curatube.com sign up for my email list and you can know exactly when it drops because i'm planning on dropping a lot of goodies not just do fan art um normally fan art does really well at conventions since um i don't have too much oc art at the moment i do have a lot of designs in mind but i wanted to make a lot of the initial investment back for a lot of the equipment you guys see me using my room like i have two printers and i'm printing out the mask right now and it looks so creepy why did i just do the eyes like that i just did the eyes and then the mouth because i'm like oh this this would probably look interesting and the process that i'm making this is called sublimation so the image gets like oh i don't know the best way to describe it but it permanently burns onto the product so even if you wash it multiple times it's still gucci it's a whole scientific process where the ink turns into gas and uh, using heat this giant heat press and oh you guys can see that's always the most exciting part seeing how it comes out i have to like measure the size and different things and ah oh, and i'm using a heat glove to make sure i don't burn myself this is how it looks um and now i'm gonna make the second one um these mass um blanks are much bigger than i want it to be so i'm not gonna make a whole lot of them i'm gonna see how they sell at the convention or not uh, but i definitely do want to make more in the future but those they're a little bit tricky to design for because you can't just like splash on like um a full illustration on there they don't always look nice so now we get into the stationary stuff which i've been wanting to try for so long um, I wasted a lot of supplies measuring the filling paper. I didn't get every step of the process. I tried the best that I could, um, but I did record a short of this where it speeds up through the whole process, but this is in a little bit in real time to show you guys what it entail. I had to measure the paper and I chose the most weird size to make these notebooks, four by six, because I wanted like, I want it to be small, like a small planner. Um, but yeah, that cost me a lot in labor trying to figure out what works. Uh, it was a lot of learning curve, but I did have a lot of fun with it at the end of the day, seeing what works. But I think I'm just gonna get like paper that I already cut at that size because trying to cut like 50 sheets, I wanted to do 90 sheets initially, but it wasn't cutting through as you guys can see right there. So I had to like, um, and it wasn't straight and that's gonna affect the next step which is punching the holes ah <sighs> but yeah man but the sound of my cutting board is so satisfying I hear this ah uh, and i'm so happy i got everything into you <laughs> Oh yeah, I wasted so much paper and size and oh man, it was an interesting learning experience. And all the equipment that I'm using, I'm using the cinch bookmaking machine. I'll leave them down below since I'm really bad with the names, but I'm measuring everything, make sure it's cut right and lines up. Oh man, it's my fault. I chose such a weird size to make these notebooks. <laughs> I 
but I couldn't resist. I really wanted small, tiny anime notebooks. I decided to use my ray print from my last video. You guys can see in my previous video, me drawing this illustration. But yeah, you guys are gonna see. I'm gonna punch the holes. And it doesn't line up because it wasn't a straight cut. And I'm like, oh, it wasn't for just one page. Okay, so that one kind of came out good, but oh man. I think maybe it's just me. I, I'm not good at keeping things straight, but I need to be good at attention to details with these types of things. But otherwise, the sound of just punching in the paper holes is so satisfying, man. Ah. <sighs> But this was a really fun learning experience um, and I definitely think the second time I'm going to do much better I'm going to buy everything pre-cut because I got the chipboard, the backing of the paper the exact size I want it's just the filling paper, I don't know why, why? why? it was just cheaper to buy a 500 ream of paper I believe but hear the sound guys Ah, oh, it's so satisfying. I'll make a separate video on how this works, this machine works, if you guys are interested. But for now, this is just me struggling trying to figure it out. My pages were not coming. I wasted like half of the pages I made. I ended up like... I believe I ended up with like 50 pages when I like cut up 90. So I wasted about 40 pages. <laughs> But yeah, I, I thought this route would be cheaper because it was like a 500 ream of paper. I cut it down to size. It was like a penny per paper. And I was like, oh, this is such a good deal. But the labor, the the margin of error was so high for this part. Oh, no. But this was the satisfying part. But I think I did it wrong. I think I put it in the pages wrong. And because the inside of the coil, you guys will see, is supposed to be on the inside page. I'm not sure if I'm making sense, but... Um, when I did the reel, it seemed like a lot of people like this notebook, so I'm just gonna improve so that way there's not a lot of margin of errors because at the end of the day, I just wanted cute anime notebooks with my art. Um, I didn't just want to have regular filler paper, I wanted to design my own inside pages, so I need to get better at this step. This was another satisfying sound crunching in the coil. But it was a lot of error steps and errors because when I did it, uh, the the first couple times the cover started to come off. I messed up and I had to try to get it in because once I fully close it, it can't open up back the coils of the notebook. So yeah, it's a lot of trial and error and uh, a lot of supplies wasted. But I'm really happy I made it once because I can't wait to do it again. I, I did my research. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun trying out my own different pages. I want to make my own anime planners and uh, I'll get you guys in the next one. Oh, look at this. Bye.